one of the most important things in all of Rocket League is making sure that we are moving into positions on the field that actually are good for our team. So in today's video, we'll be discussing a couple of examples where poor positioning or poor rotations leads to a lot of awkward situations, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Okay, this is something that we like legitimately need to stop doing though. Um, one of the most telling stats of who is going to win a game is which team is behind the ball more. And this is exactly a moment where we like where it's important because you just decide there is absolutely no chance that this ball is going to go anywhere dangerous. I'm going to just go to the midfield. <laughs> like, yeah. like you're all the way out here and it's like, um, sure. I mean, it works because risk bangs the ball towards you. But now you're just really far ahead of the play. Um, and imagine if, you know, you had rotated behind wrist and you're like over here. And now this bang comes out. Hey, look. Uh. That's, um, that's a scorable ball. But because you're ahead of the play, you can't do anything. Like now you just have to go back and you're about to get yourself in a real awkward spot. Because now you also then turn back upfield as this guy's playing the ball. Um, and, and now you're just kind of running around like a chicken with your head cut off. Um, so I think the biggest thing for you is just be a bit calmer in where you're going. Um, so you see this touch. There is no reason to believe that this ball is out of our half yet. It's like there's no, there's also not really a passing option here because we're probably going to get challenged. So if you just at this exact moment turn back towards the net, swoop back that way and waited to see what happened, then if risk gets beat on the back wall here, you'd be in net to challenge it. If the ball gets cleared like it does, you'd be in net to push out with momentum to be able to challenge the ball as well, as opposed to already being ahead of it where you can't really do a whole lot. Um, and then once you're out here, you see this. Be careful about, again, turning fully upfield. Like, you can see this guy is, you know, already touching the ball, so there's really no reason to turn this way because he's pretty much just dropping the ball right in front of himself um but you end up you know ahead of the ball again because you turn forward as opposed to again if you had just if you had just stayed back this way now you can easily turn on this and have control towards the wall where you could actually utilize your mechanics and have space with them as opposed to having to work your way all the way back across the field while being chased down by the opponents so this all kind of comes down to just staying behind the ball if you had been behind the ball the entire time this would have been a very easy clear you wouldn't have been in an awkward spot at all um, so just be careful of that. Stay behind the ball whenever possible, unless you see a very obvious opportunity for a pass. It's fine. Good pressure. Um, again here, we're being over aggressive. You get beat, just start to go back. Um, you don't want to leave your team at a disadvantage. I think you're trying to go get that boost, but now like, look at the situation. Riss is now back by himself purely because you haven't rotated. And the entire time he's wondering like what the heck is going on um because if i'm wrist here like just watching this i see my teammate push forward i see him get beat my expectation is that you're gonna come back um my expectation is not that you're gonna linger in my opponent's half forever because now it's like okay i can't challenge this because i don't have anyone back behind me so if i get beat it's just in my net because there's just no support here um so we need to make sure that we're staying in spots to support our teammates we can't just run away from the play to go harass someone that really doesn't have a whole lot of impact on anything. At this moment, this is the demo opportunity. Right there. That's where we should have been looking this entire time in our rotation as we were coming back. Like these midfield passing options are who we want to look to take out because the guy you were trying to demo is not involved in the play at all. If you had gotten this guy, we absolutely have no issues whatsoever because there'd be no passing option. You could have gotten some pads and then swung this way. Um, dodge this demo and then mid back, you know, over here. And then you still could have gone backboard and you also would have been away from all of this traffic. Um, that was created by you rotating in this way. But if you had just at this moment gone and committed for this demo, even though he's going to jump, like you'd still be fine. And then you'd be in a much better spot to play to the backboard and have a bit of space to actually work with as opposed to being very awkward and still on zero boost. Um, you kind of strand yourself on zero boost here, actually. Um, okay. So you land. 
I think your mentality currently is that you're just going for a big boost somewhere because you go directly for the mid boost and you don't even know if it's there. And then you commit for the corner that's going to be stolen by this guy. When you land here, what I want you to build a habit of, um, and this will help in your ranked games, this will help in our matches, this will help in literally everything. If you, instead of committing for these mid boosts right away, just start off by going for these. If you had just gone here, like you can start working your way downfield as you go. You can just grab all these. If the play develops in a way that it goes to this side and you can go out for this corner boost, then sure. If it develops in such a way where it's heading towards the net, you can just follow this path directly in to play the ball. This path right here will leave your options a lot more open as opposed to committing for a mid boost and then a corner boost, where if you miss them, not only have you committed all the way to the edge of the field, without really knowing what exactly is going on in the play. But you've also put yourself in a situation where if the mid boost isn't there and this one gets stolen, you're now on zero, as opposed to the 50 or so boost you could have had by going here. Um, so don't autopilot for the big boost. Not worth it. <laughs> it puts you in a lot of awkward spots. Um, and this is probably one of the main reasons that you end up on zero boost so much, is because you go for these over these. Um, so just focus on those small pads over the big boost almost every time, at least initially in your rotations. Once you see where the play is going, then you can adjust to go get uh, one of the big boosts if you have the time. But at least that way you keep your flexibility open um, as opposed to being now stuck here with zero boost without much to really do. Um, here's another situation where you're committing all the way to the edge of the field for no reason. Um, so kind of the same thing I told Riss. You land here. Don't commit for the going all the way across the field. You can just go here, take these pads all the, all the way down. And then as you saw this play develop, like this pinch, you would then be able to, instead of going directly to the corner because you need that boost, you'd be able to swing wide and come this way and then get an actual decent touch on the ball. It's fine. Good pressure there. You have no boost. Um, Again, be careful about running forward here. Um, once the pass is behind you, like, I don't mind you being upfield here a little bit because there is the potential pass. So, like, you obviously land here. This is all fine. If I hit you, like, perfectly, this is possibly a goal. I don't. Once it's behind you like this um, and you see that that mid boost isn't there, just go back. It's not worth it to go all the way upfield because, again, you don't really know what's happening a whole lot behind you. Because um, now it's also awkward a little bit. Because um, also, I will say... Um, now, it's possible that Baxter takes the corner boost if you're not there, although he did just get the mid. If you're not here, it's possible that he doesn't play for this corner. And now when I come down with the ball, I have a boost there for me, as opposed to being starved um, completely. Um, so another reason not to run forward like that, just to try to make things as predictable as possible, because I'm also working on zero boost. So if I get beat, Riss is now completely alone. Um, which isn't where we want to be necessarily. And then, yeah. Um, so I should definitely tell you not to jump for this, but from your perspective, you should also just not jump for this. Um, yes, it looks juicy, but there's an opponent coming right out of net. There's absolutely no way you get this ball past him. That ball is moving way too slowly to be an effective pass. Um, I would just play safe, especially in a tie game with 40 seconds left. It's just not worth it. Um, I think we should start making sure that we're not jumping for things unless we know for a fact we're going to have a play on it. As you guys can see, Rocket League, especially on the defensive side of the ball, is all about being there to support your team whenever possible. If you find yourself in positions around the field where you are either not able to support your team, or even worse, you're actively hurting your team's position on the field, you need to make sure that you can figure out how you ended up there, and make sure you can avoid awkward situations like that in the future. Of course, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate each and every one of you who made it to this point in the video, and I do hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you did, make sure you click that subscribe button right down below so you make sure you don't miss any future Rocket League content. Additionally, if you'd like to be a bit more involved in the community we're building here, feel free to join my Discord, which I'll have linked down in the description. And as always, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. See you later, guys.